Guys, I'm introducing another new house today on the channel. We're talking about Shiraz Parfums. This is how the fragrances look. It's an indie niche luxury house that's very, very exciting with some of the fragrances that I'm going to talk to you about. There's four fragrances I tested out from this house. They're currently sold at uh, Javoy Mayfair in London and also Les Centures in London. And hopefully they'll start selling in the States as well at some retailers. But there's two out of four fragrances that I really, really fell for here. And I'm going to let you know all about all four of them. And then after I tell you about the fragrances, I'll let you know which are my favorites. There's also a giveaway here, a full bottle of choice giveaway for one lucky subscriber in the UK, EU, and the USA. So find out all about Shiraz Parfums coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about Shiraz Parfums, another new house I'm introducing on the channel. Just to let you know, here in about four weeks, I'm taking off for about a month, a little over a month, I should say, and I won't be doing any new house introductions on the channel on that during that time. Who knows, there might be one or two slipped in, but I'm not going to do it regularly. I'm going to take a pause from this. But I do have a few other houses that I'm introducing until I leave. So stay tuned for those, and hopefully I can get some giveaways sponsored as well. Not, not everyone's doing giveaways, but we've got one here today. And Shiraz Parfums is doing a full bottle giveaway of uh, one fragrance of choice to a subscriber of this channel. So if you don't know uh, Shiraz Parfums, uh, you can go ahead and find out more about them on Instagram where you can follow them. There they have nice photos of their fragrances and everything you can discover more about the brand. And I found out about this house probably about four or five months ago, I should say. I almost said six months. But two of the fragrances here I really enjoyed. I couldn't stop wearing one of them actually because it smelled so great on me and I uh, really, really uh, fell in love with that one. You'll find out what it is at the end of the video. And uh, two of them are oud focused. One of them is an amber, and then another one is uh, a fougere. So, what do we go ahead and do? The first fragrance, I'm going in alphabetical order, but we're going to go numerical as well because the first fragrance is n numerical. And we're talking about 1952 first, this one right here. Really beautiful presentation, don't you think? I like this little dangly thing here. Uh, looks really wonderful how it's put together and very luxurious here as well. So this is 1952. It's considered an aromatic fougere. So it features notes of bergamot, ginger, juniper berry, Sicilian lemon, grapefruit, Persian lime, thyme, galbanum, jasmine, pink pepper, vetiver, cedarwood, and benzoin. There's a lot going on here in this fragrance, but to me, it wears very, very citrusy, and also it dries down to some woods and amber in the base. It's not your typical familiar smelling fougere. To me, it doesn't have that lavender geranium combo that I typically see in fougeres. This one has thyme, so the thyme is the herbal kind of aromatic note that's typically found in fougeres. But this one to me is a very, very citrusy fougere in that there's loads of citruses. There's zing, there's spice, there's uh, refreshing qualities about it. And of course, as I said, as it's drying down, it does get a little ambery and woody as well. So let's go ahead and smell this one, 1952. If if you go to the Shiraz Parfums website, you can learn more about the inspirations behind the, the fragrances from this house. Uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you what the fragrances are all, all about here in this video. And you want to learn more about the brand, you can go to their website and discover more. And of course, as I said, definitely go check them out on uh, Instagram as they have a nice presence there with uh, great photos of their fragrances. And again, this one to me is very fresh, uber, uber fresh and aromatic with an overdose of citruses. And I feel like this fougere is a very fresh citrusy fougere. And the thyme is there. It does add the contrast of the herbal aromatic touches here against the citruses, but it kind of becomes very citrusy even further for me. For some reason, I've got more citruses than the aromatics, but as it's drying down, it does get that vetiver touches, the cedar wood and amber. So there's some light uh, grassy touches, but it's a very spicy take on citrusy aromatic fougere, I would say. And um, maybe it's not necessarily barber shoppy fougere, because typically when I think about fougere fragrances, I think of barbershop 
the idea of lavender to me is uh, the idea of a barbershoppy uh, fragrance. And this one doesn't have the lavender. So mostly it becomes a very citrusy, kind of a green herbal aromatic fragrance, drying down to spiciness, woods, and uh, also amber. So this is 1952, the first fragrance. And again, I'm doing this in alphabetical order, but in this case, numerical, because this one is numerical 1952 numbered. And we've got three more fragrances I'm going to let you know about. So the next fragrance I'm going to talk about from Shiraz Parfums is Kingston, this one right here. This is an amber that does hint at a couple of other amber fragrances I know, but it wears so different and so gorgeous that is kind of an addicting smell you want to keep smelling. Does that make sense? So this fragrance, Kingston, features notes of amber rome, tonka beans, vanilla, amber, benzoin, lavender, grapefruit, bergamot, and mandarin orange. This is a super delicious amber fragrance. It hints at Grand Soir a little bit from the house of Maison Francis Kirkchen, but smells so different. It smells really, really different. For me, this is a very pillowy, soft, fluffy cotton balls, marshmallows, the idea of the fluffiness of these notes, the soft cushiony touches is how the fragrance wears. So then I was testing this fragrance out and I looked up notes and everything and I saw Amber Rome and I said to myself, what the heck is Amber Rome? I know it's probably a proprietary ingredient for one of those houses or firms that, uh, you know, have uh, perfumers work at, but I looked it up and I found this, uh, quote from Perfumers World. It says, what is Amber Rome? Amber Rome base PW is an ambergris base representing the animalic character of natural ambergris, missing from many modern chemical substitutes. It has a powerful, rich, deep ambergris, leather, castorium, balsamic character. So I had to look it up and I go, okay, yes, there is kind of an ambergris-like presence here, not animalic whatsoever. And the idea of ambergris and amber together is really great. And some fragrances that create amber fragrances do use either authentic amber or like a synthetic amber. And here with this one, the smell is really addicting with uh, the fact that they have the amber rome and also the amber here. Again, there's something very pillowy, cushiony, soft here. And it just wears like this kind of airy, ethereal amber that's not really heavy and dense and weighty. And then also there's a bit of a milky muskiness in there as well. Soft, really, really beautiful, just a very flowy amber that is so inviting and so ind addicting that I kept wanting to wear more of it. It's that delicious, guys. This is a really, really great amber fragrance. So different to me. It's almost like taking Grand Soir and combining it with something like Molten Brown's Milky Musk and creating this kind of very comforting, very soothing amber fragrance. Really delicious. Anyway, this is Kingston from... The House of Shiraz Parfums, that's the second fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today. And then the next fragrance, the third fragrance I'm talking about is Lahore, this one right here. So the next two fragrances, this one and the next one, are oud-focused, but one of them is better than the other, and I'll let you know which one after I get to the end of the video. But this one is considered a woody, spicy fragrance featuring notes of saffron, Assam oud, oud samrat, benzoin, labdanum, musks, and vetiver. This one does seem a bit animalic and also not overwhelming animalic that you can't wear it. But some of you that are sensitive to animalic notes, this might be a bit animalic, and it's because of the oud that's in here. There's loads of spices here and loads of woods. It does wear woody, oody, spicy for sure. But when the fragrance is drying down, it does get kind of resinous, ambery. But along the way, there's smoky touches and musky touches and a bit of an earthy presence in there as well when it's drying down in the base notes. But it smells quite beautiful. It's a really nice smelling oud. It's wearable, even with the funk in there, the animalic funk. And so uh, I appreciated wearing this one. And once again, there's a refinement about these fragrances, especially noticed with Kingston and then Lahore and the next one that I'm going to talk to you about. 
that I really liked. And uh, they're indie fragrances by an indie perfumer. You can find out more information about the perfumer and also the house uh, on their website. But really, there's this really elegant quality about some of these fragrances. Sometimes fragrances like Lahore can get a bit too much with the animalics, and it kind of loses the elegance about the fragrance. And here, the animalic touch is really the right amount in there, not to overdo it, but still have it and enjoy it along the way when you're wearing it. This one also has a bit of a, a light, light cumin touch on me, and I feel like it's because of the different woods and ouds combined together. And it does get a little leathery as well with the fact that it has saffron uh, featured in this uh, fragrance as well. So this is Lahore. This is one of two oud fragrances from the House of Shiraz Parfums. And then, finally, last but not least, this is Taj. This one right here. Come on now, focus. There we go. So this one is considered a woody floral. At least that's what I think it is because those are the kind of notes there are. But there's orris here. There's roses, a couple of different types of roses. Oud Assam as well. And I also feel like I get a little bit of cumin in here as well. Once again, very refined fragrance. And uh, between the two ouds, I prefer this one. There's something very classy about this fragrance. And it wears very, very classy and regal. There's an elegance about it. And it's the right amount of notes, and it's the right amount of oud. The roses are beautiful. It does get powdery. The orris really creates a light creaminess and a very powdery touch. And then I get that light spice from something like cumin in here. And once again, it could be notes that are, you know, working together to create this kind of an accord. But simply beautiful, very rich, expensive smelling oud fragrance with rose. And it doesn't smell like oud and rose combo of fragrances like black oud or, you know, oud silk mood from MFK and things like that. Yeah, the rose is in here, but it's not super intense in your face roses. It's there to just play with the orris and the oud together. I feel like it's a nice balance of these notes together working so beautifully and playing wonderfully. Just the fragrance itself is very, very expensive smelling there's something very expensive about it not necessarily when you smell it out of the bottle but when you wear it because for me i had dismissed this one until i started testing it out on skin and i'm like wow this is so gorgeous it smells great on me wears beautifully and i feel very very you know rich and expensive when i'm wearing this one so this is definitely a great release from this house this is uh, taj from uh, shiraz parfums so can you guess my list of favorites like my number one favorite and my least favorite from the house so honestly my favorite is kingston i i really really love the way this fragrance smells and again as i said it smells like a cross between grand soir and milky musk there's a very cloudy fluffy musky thing almost like milk musk kind of thing happening here that the combination is intoxicating and welcoming and inviting and comforting soothing but it's got the spices, it's got the resins, it's got uh, all this gorgeousness all combined to be a very gorgeous wear. Also great lingering power when you think the fragrance doesn't have that intensity because of this kind of airiness about it that I'm getting. Again, it's lightly hinting at Grand Soir, lightly hinting at something like Milk Musk from Molten Brown, but the combination together to create this very ethereal kind of amber that's Unlike other ambers, but then, yeah, there's reminders of other ambers as well. So Kingston is my number one favorite from the house of Shiraz Parfums. And then my number two favorite from Shiraz Parfums is Taj, this one right here. Yeah, this one, I didn't expect much from it after I smelled it out of the bottle. But when I put it on skin, started wearing it, I thought, wow, this makes me feel very rich. There's something about this one that has this kind of elegance about it and not overwhelming because sometimes oud fragrances can be overwhelming. Both of the oud fragrances are not like that. In fact, the whole entire house, they don't wear they don't wear like really beastly. They're just very elegant creations, but I feel like Taj is definitely my number two favorite because the, when you smell it, but put it on and things like that, it just really makes you feel very, very classy and elegant. 
and uh, you know rich and things like that so it's great fragrance this is an oud rose combo i think it's the orris that's in here remember i said they're all like almost like equal amounts in there really nicely balanced and i feel like the orris helps make the fragrance very very airy and you know just something about it combination just gives it that kind of very elegant uh, quality it smells expensive because in the end orris is a very expensive note but either way this is taj and this is my second favorite and then Lahore is my third favorite. And again, this one has the animalic qualities, as I said, but enough that you can tolerate it. But just be warned, if you are not used to animalic fragrances, this might come off animalic to you. It is, in the end, an animalic type of oud that they're using in this. They're not using any kind of like civet or anything like that to create the animalic touch. It's the oud. It has that funk kind of a thing. And yeah, this one uh, definitely is uh, number three. It smells great, uh, but I prefer the other one more because the other one just puts me into that kind of like uh, very rich state. Uh, I don't know what it is about it. Is it subconscious? Is it just the way it wears? Is it the Auris? I don't know, but uh, this, this one definitely deserves to be in that number three spot. It could also be the fact that it does have that funk and uh, I didn't want to, you know, enjoy funk or animalic touches. I wanted something a little more inviting and uh, Taj did that and lastly 1952 is at the bottom unfortunately it just ended up at the bottom because I kind of was looking for that kind of traditional style of fougere and I didn't get that and there's nothing wrong with creating a new style of fougere changing up the notes and everything but for some reason this one didn't work for me I found the other fragrances a little more exciting and this one fell at the bottom I felt like it was way too much citruses and the thyme was kind of buried in and, and the thyme was the the secret ingredient for a fougere because it needs that kind of herbal magic and it just kind of you know disappeared swimming in all of the citruses. So either way this one was uh, ranked at the bottom 1952 uh, but you know if you test it you might like this one more than the others but for me uh, it just didn't work sadly. So let me know your thoughts if you have sampled these fragrances. Those of you that live in London, have you gone to Javoy Mayfair or Les Centours to test these fragrances out? I definitely think you should get your noses on these fragrances. Those of you that are there and have access to these fragrances, and hopefully these will make it to some retailers here in the States. So those of us that live here can get uh, you know, our noses on them as well. So let's talk about the giveaway. We're doing a full bottle giveaway of choice to a subscriber of this channel from the USA, EU, and the UK. All you have to do is put down what you liked about this video, which fragrance would you pick if you won, and uh, put down your country and or state if you are in the USA. That's it. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And other than that, good luck with the giveaway. Yeah, guys, if you know these fragrances, if you've gotten your nose on these fragrances, do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. I'd like to see how many of you knows it. And again, go to their uh, website to find out more information about the fragrances. And also go to their Instagram to check out some of their uh, imagery for the fragrances as well. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. And real quickly, I want to show you the presentation for the Shiraz Parfums fragrances. Here I'll do with 1952. This is how they come in a box like this. On the back, the name of the fragrance and some information is listed. And I haven't seen boxes like this. They're usually, you know, featured like this rather than in a horizontal. But then we've got the fragrance that opens up in here like this. Uh, some information about the fragrance inside the card here I should show you. Uh, it's like that. And uh, this is the other side. And then, of course, the fragrance fits inside like this. It's nice. It's a nice, luxurious presentation. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the presentation for Shiraz Parfums. I like the fact that they're a little different and not typical of other brands, uh, which makes the brand stand out. Usually, when you find fragrances luxurious like that and in big presentation, they come in more vertical boxes like this and I like the fact that these are horizontal although they are using up quite a bit of uh, 
you know they're not using up a, a lot of the real estate is, is what I should say, but still I think uh, it's nicely uh, put in here and looks very luxurious. But either way, just a little information about the presentation for Shiraz Parfums.